How's it going guys? My name is Michael and today we're going to give you a tour of our huge 400 foot chicken barn that we've uh, kind of turned into a homestead. Oh girl. So Lady here is our dairy goat and she is bred with butters. They're both Nigerian dwarfs. So come springtime, she will be giving us babies and milk. <laughs> this chicken barn was completely vacant um, and it was full of chicken feeders. All the chicken feeders were still in here, all the waterers were still in here. Um, and it had been vacant for probably 10 years. This barn is 400 feet long by 40 feet wide. So I felt like there's a lot of potential here for us. And the ultimate plan is for this side that I'm on right now to be animals and gardening. And the other side, I'll bring you guys to the other side. Now the other side of this barn, um, I have a small firewood business that I run. And then uh, I do some carpentry and some arts and crafts kind of stuff out of here as well. Ideally, what I really want to do with this side of the barn is close it all in and make some type of a venue here. Um, I've got the structure, the barn needs some work. Uh, if you've seen the video of the flyover with the drone, the roof is starting to rust pretty bad. I need to get up there and get it sealed. It does leak when it rains, so she needs some TLC. But I would love this to be some type of a community venue, um, just for events. I think that would be really cool, in my personal opinion. Chickens! <laughs> Oh, there they come. Got to talk chicken to them. You can be in the you can be in the video if you'd be a good boy. Or not. We've got 16 acres here, and the first thing on our to-do list was to get a garden put in, um, because we want to be as self-sufficient as possible. So we put in a 75 by 50 garden. In that garden, we have 14 70-foot rows. I think it's 70 foot. Maybe it's a little bit shorter. In the garden, we grew squash, potatoes, green beans, carrots tomatoes um, we grew several different varieties of squash um, but our biggest crop that we grow is potatoes about four or five of our rows is nothing but potatoes and we have got buckets and buckets of potatoes that hopefully will last us through the winter and also give us seed potatoes for the springtime we've got a special rooster he knows if he'll follow me in here i'll give him a little extra Bold. This spot that I'm standing at right here was eight inches of standing water anytime it rained. You have this 400 foot barn with zero drainage system. So this whole drive right here was just eight inches to a foot of water. So I came in with an excavator, a little mini X, I dug a trench, I put down what's called a French drain, and now all of that water runs down the side of this, off the side of our property over here. And the ultimate goal is we have a spot down below that's we cleared two acres where we wanna build a barn dominium, and all of that water will feed down to a pond close to where our barn dominium is gonna be so we can have a little pond. So this barn, this 400 foot barn is actually gonna help build a water feature for us in the future. And when we first moved into this property, we went ahead and put an RV pad in with three RV spots. I've already got the septic ran for it and the electric ran for one spot. We were living in a RV full time when we first moved out here. We had our first child in the RV home birth right here. Um, where the RV was sitting. So that uh, was quite the experience. Um, after we had our first child, we realized we needed a little more space. So we went ahead and sold the RV, got a cheap single wide, and now we're pregnant again. So we're probably gonna have to upsize again um, while we build. Now in my head, the first thing I think is, man, we can do an efficiency in this part. Um, that's what's going through my mind. We poured a concrete slab right here in the center of the barn, smack dab in the middle. I uh, ran the plumbing for it, poured the concrete. 
lady is very verbal today. Um, and we're thinking we're gonna put some type of inefficiency in here. We just haven't really figured it out yet. Oh, so I remember, um, it's 2022, we were looking for property and this property came up and every property that we had looked for, mind you, we're trying to find something close to Taylor's parents. Every property that we had looked for instantly sold in the next day. It was, it was COVID craziness happening, right? And uh, I remember praying about it and I asked God, I said, Lord, if you want me to buy this property, please give me an answer. Please show me that you want me to buy this. And that night we went to sleep. I woke up at 2 a.m. I had a dream that woke me up from my sleep. And I looked over at Taylor and she was wide awake. I looked at Taylor and I said, God just gave me a dream. And she was like, what is it? And uh, in my dream, I seen this barn. And in the barn, there was fruit trees and just plants and vegetables growing out of this barn. And in the, in the dream, we were being featured in Home and Garden, uh, in the Home and Garden magazine. And the way I interpreted that was God telling me, hey, this property is going to be fruitful for you. It is going to produce for you. Um, so all along, ever since I had that dream and we bought the property, I've always wanted to turn the garden side of the barn into a giant greenhouse. I would love to take the roof off of the barn and put the uh, the poly or the clear plastic on top of it, kind of close it in a little bit and turn that whole side of that barn into a giant greenhouse. I just think that'd be such an awesome idea. Now the lady that we bought this barn off of had already drawn up blueprints to build a house inside of it and live out of this barn. Um, so I've actually got the blueprints for that still to be able to do that if we decide to go that route. But as for now, we really want to build a barn dominium at the bottom of the property um, just to have something that we think is going to be beneficial for us. Now, in case you're wondering what in the world's all this wood for, um, so the logs are for home heat and then all the slab wood we cut up for bundles to sell to campgrounds, gas stations, grocery stores, etc., things like that. So one of the requirements we had when buying this property is first and foremost, most importantly, it had to have one, no restrictions. Um, having no restrictions was such an important part of the way we want to live our life. Um, as far as having a homestead, a lot of the properties that we looked at had so many restrictions. You couldn't have pigs. Your dogs had to be on a leash at all times. Um, you couldn't have so many horses. You couldn't have so many chickens. And we don't want to have to deal with any of that HOA bull crap. So we live on a dead end road. Um, we have some great neighbors. Everybody is very much of the same mindset that we are. Another requirement that it had to be was below $180,000. In our next video, we'll tell you guys how we bought this property debt free. The second thing that was important to us was that it had a water source on it. And we do have a, uh, a creek. It is a seasonal uh, creek that runs through the back side of our property. It actually runs through the middle of our property, but it's more towards the back. Um, so we do have a water source. It's not a full-time water source. We plan on using the barn with a water catchment system as our, as our main water source when we have the time and the finances to start that project. Another very important thing for us on a property was it had to have room for a garden. We wanted something that had some open land already on it. And as you can see in the drone footage, we have plenty of that already, um, including the spot that we cleared at the bottom. I think the spot at the bottom is probably like an acre, acre and a half that we cleared. We still have a bunch of timber down there that we have to burn off, a bunch of brush that needs burnt. We'll be bringing you guys tons of DIY projects and tons of homesteading information and canning and preserving. So if you wanna help support our channel, make sure to hit mash that like button and subscribe to our channel. Drop us some comments. We also have an Amazon storefront. If you guys wanna check out some of our cool Amazon homesteading products that we sell on our Amazon storefront, feel free to do that as well. It's in the bio below. God bless you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with us and we look forward to bringing you some more videos. I think it's needless to say, the garden is doing excellent. We literally don't have any rows because everything is growing so quickly and we're having to like try and trellis it as we go, but we can't keep up with it. It's all growing so fast.